Hello everyone and welcome to Talk Good Game. It's just finished Luton Town 1, West Ham United 1. Luton's final friendly of the pre-season before they kick off the championship campaign next weekend. West Ham's second last friendly. We go to France next weekend um, as we take on Lens. But, well, good preparation for West Ham today. We had a little bit of a mix-up at the back. We had to play three um, at the back. Only one senior fit centre-back in Kurt Zuma. And I think... It might be being kind to Kurt Zuma to call him fully fit because by the end of the game, certainly he was hobbling quite a bit there. But anyway, we're going to discuss the brief highlights and a couple of player performances. As always, a little disclaimer. It is, of course, only pre-season, so don't take what I say after this point too serious. However, there is quite a few things that cropped up today that we saw in other games in pre-season, but also in the Premier League last season as well. And it sort of continued into the summer. And I think it's naive to ignore it completely. Perhaps. But anyway, let's talk about the first half. I thought we looked all right, to be honest with you. As far as a friendly goes, I felt like we notched up the intensity a little bit in the first 45 minutes in comparison to what we saw at Reading last Saturday at Rangers on Tuesday night. I thought we were taking a little bit more serious. Not full on 100% competitive or anything like that, but just a little bit more serious, which makes sense given that we're getting closer to the Man City game in a couple of weeks' time. Makes sense given what happened on Tuesday and sort of how angry David Moyes appeared, how disappointed in some of the performances. Uh, we opened the scoring. Thomas Suchek, a really good bit of play by West Ham, actually. We sort of overloaded the left-hand side and then switched over to Sufal, who was in acres of space, as he always is, hugging that right touchline. He must be very difficult to play against as a wing-back because he just doesn't come in field. He just stays out there. And when you do that, the opposition doesn't really know what to do because you want to stay in line with your centre back. You want to move across with them. But in doing so, you're giving Sufal acres of space. So we've got the ball out to him. The ball in was from Fernals was um average at best, got cleared out easily enough to Declan Rice. He gave it to Creswell. Beauty of a cross, fantastic header by Thomas Suchak as well. 1-0 West Ham. We went in half-time 1-0 up to. There wasn't loads else in terms of action, in terms of goalkeeper saves for either team, really. But I thought we were playing relatively well. I thought Suchek and Rice were looking good in midfield. And I felt in the first half, Rice was perhaps sitting a little bit deeper than what we saw in the Penny League last season. When I did this review for the Rangers game, somebody in the live chat said that they felt Declan Rice was being a little bit more restrained than perhaps, that we'd saw last season. And I had to admit, I hadn't really noticed it. But I made a note of it, that person's comments. I do read the live chat, by the way, during the reviews. I do keep an eye on what you're saying. And um, I keep an eye on your comments as well. I'll try and pick up what you are saying as well and look out for it. So today I was sort of looking out for the deck and rice role. And I felt in the first half he was sitting back a little bit. And so check words getting it forward a little bit more than perhaps that we saw last season. Not so much in the second half, though. But in the first 45, I thought them two played really well. I thought most people were fine, actually. There was only one player with cause for concern for myself at halftime, and that was Kurt Zuma. I felt in possession. He did really bad, to be honest with you. Whenever Luton pressed Kurt Zuma, he was just at sixes and sevens, got the ball cut under his feet a few times, had to get bailed out by a couple of players, including Declan Rice, and it just didn't look too great in possession from Kurt Zuma. And then, funnily enough, we switched to three at the back, with Johnson, Zuma and Creswell. And the one player that wasn't too keen with it being three centre-backs was our actual centre-back. But in terms of going forward, we didn't really create too much, if I'm honest with you. I think Ben Rama had another quiet game. Fernandes had another quiet game. A couple of instances where they got the ball in a bit of space and they would try and do something, but it was just the wrong decision, really. Um, Jared Bowen started the game as striker. Didn't get, didn't barely saw him get the ball, to be honest with you. The first half, the ball didn't go anywhere near him. Ariola looked quite composed in possession in goal, which was pleasing as well. And I thought Creswell had a good 45 minutes and in that left centre back role. Johnson, not so keen on on the other side of that defence in the first first half, which is strange, really. I thought he looked quite impressive in the competitive games when we used him there, which wasn't often, but he looked quite promising. This one, not so much. In the second half, though, we made a couple of changes at the break. We took off um, Bernal's and Ben Rama. We put on Vlasic and Mikhail Antonio. So Jared Bowen dropped back into the number 10 role. And we started with three at the back. Later on, we made changes, which then switched to four at the back. But we start, started the second half with three at the back. And um, initially, Vlasic looked quite sharp. He had a really good... Uh, he had half a chance on his left foot. But it was a decent shot, good save on another date. Falls to Antonio, who puts something in the back, in the back of an empty net. 
And I think we started the second half relatively brightly, but as the second half went on, I thought Luton were starting to get the tails up a little bit and they were starting to ramp up the intensity. And, and in doing so, I'll be honest with you, I thought um, a couple of naughty tackles were going in by us, a few of the Luton players. Now, I sort of half get it. They kick off their championship season next weekend. So they're going to, this is like their last friendly, a big training session for them, essentially. So for a lot of the players, it's the last chance to impress the manager. But um, so I could kind of see why they were perhaps taking it a bit more serious than us. But I felt Bowen was getting kicked around a bit. There was a bit of a naughty one that went in on Supal sort of towards the end of the match as well. So ooh, it's not really friendly. It's friendly, is it? Um, but I felt Vlasic was looked bright when he came on. I felt he faded for the last 10, 15 minutes. I would have liked to see a bit more from him um, because I think this preseason, I think he's probably been one of our better players. I think he's probably impressed me more than what I've seen from Fernals and Ben Rama. Um, but he's had less minutes, so I'd argue it's probably easier for him to impress, if that makes sense. And he's obviously got his goal last weekend too, which helps. But today, looked bright, but went on to fade. And Mikel Antonio, I mean, I think every game this summer, he's missed a big chance. And when I say a big chance, I mean a one-on-one. A one -on -one. And it's, it's always been a clean one-on-one -on -one as well. It's not like the ball's dropped to him and he's swiped at Not that. Literally, ball at feet, one in and on goal. Do, go do your striker thing. He's not done it. Again, today, um, mix up in the Luton defence. Fell to Antonio just inside Luton's half. Turned. He had about, I don't know, a 30-yard run into the 18-yarder. There was no defenders near him. No physical contact. There was nobody pushing him or anything like that. Bore down on the Luton goal. Keeper did well. Stayed big. Stayed on his feet as long as he could. It was a really good save by a Luton goalkeeper. And it's not the worst miss that we've seen from Antonio this summer. It's not even the worst miss we've seen from Antonio in this game. Had he scored the other couple of one-on-ones this summer, I think you would sort of dismiss it a little bit. But because it's another good save, it's another missed opportunity from Antonio, you do worry a little bit. Um, like I said, I am reading the pre I'm reading the um the live chat. I know a lot of people are sort of criticizing Antonio. I don't think he played that bad. I actually think his all-round game was was fine. I thought his build-up play was quite good. I thought he was moving well. I thought his, a couple of layoffs, the likes of Jared Bowen, Nikola Vlasic were quite neat and tidy, worked relatively hard. But you need your striker to be scoring goals. Even pre-season, it's a chance to get your confidence up early, going into the start of the season against Manchester City. His confidence can't be that high. And you've seen it later on. He has another opportunity on his left foot. And I'm not even sure how to describe it. Um, it was a shot, but it was almost like a scoop. Um, it was that bad. It hit the, the roof of the stand. Now, it is a small stand, but it was that... He was inside the 18-yarder. It's almost difficult to get it that high in such a short space, um, short distance, but he somehow scooped it high off the... I mean, it was just... At this point, you're thinking, oh, no, this is not good, is it? This is our striker. Well, like I said, I thought, I thought he played relatively well. Outside the 18-yarder, the problem is inside the 18-yarder, and he's the striker. Um, so it, it looks like we're ready to spend big money on Gianluca Scamacca. And I'm still relatively certain that even if we do sign him, Antonio will start against Man City. I'm not saying that's what I want to see. I think I'm saying that's what I think Moyes will do. But he's not making it dead, sir, is he? He's probably giving Moyes food, food for thought here, even though we've only got one friend left. I think it would be telling if Skamaka starts that friendly with Jared Bowen, and Declan Rice and that in the team. And it might give you give Antonio a little bit of a scare, actually. But like I said, play-wise, I thought he was okay. Just it's another one-on-one -on -one he's like he's missed, and it's getting a little bit worrying, if I'm honest with you. And um, they can they, they equalized right at the death. And um, Rufus Babbitt on, on comms was basically saying it's ah, it's West Ham have won. It's West Ham have won, and then of course they get a corner, and then he basically he got given an out. It's a corner, Rufus. They might score. Rufus basically said, Ah, oh, they've had loads of corners. West Ham have been fine dealing with these. It's all right. 1 1 in the back of the net. Now, if it was if this was a competitive game and there's VAR and stuff, that you would go back to it and look at it. It may get disallowed for a push on Antonio um, by Sonny Bradley, but it doesn't matter. It went in the back of the net. And I would expect Moyes is probably. Not too chuffed about this actually, because I, I know a lot of people dismiss preseason. I'm one of them. I dismiss preseason results. I'm not that bothered we drew. I look for other things such as individual player performances from individuals I feel need to impress. 
look for how we're setting up formation wise, who's taking the set paces, who's getting most game time next to Declan Mice out of our centre midfielders, for example. That's the stuff I look for rather than the actual result. But I don't think Moyes is going to look be too happy about this because if I'm honest with you, we looked just void of creativity again today. And it's pretty much been every single pre-season game that we have and in the Premier League last season. Towards the end of the domestic campaign, Europa League, I thought we were fine. For whatever reason, we were a little bit different in European football. I think it suited our style a bit more. We were able to play a bit more counter-attacking football on the European stage. But domestically, in the Premier League, I think towards the end of the season, it felt a little bit stale and that we were just struggling to create stuff against teams sitting deep in the Premier League. And I think there's an element of that today. Whenever Luton had players behind the ball, we struggled a little bit. Our only chance of creativity was through crossing. The only player I recall doing a nice pass in open play that wasn't a cross was Manuel Lanzini when he came on. Um, it was to set Antonio up for that left-footed scoop shot thing. Um, so it's not... It's not great. It's when you're watching it, you are a little bit worried that it's sort of like I said, it's only pre season, but it's continuing on from what we saw at the end of last season, and that's a bit of a worry in itself. Um, I already mentioned Kurt Zuma, Suchek, I thought looked bright today, um, getting on the ball, moving about nicely again, or something that we saw against Rangers on Tuesday night. I think I saw that again today, really comfortable in possession, really not going hiding, he's moving around well. Whenever the right back's got it, he's trying to get close to, whether it be Soufal or he's trying to get up close to him to get the ball off and turn and move it in the right direction. I've been quite impressed by Soufal today and on and Suchek, but also Soufal. Uh, I think Soufal gets forward really, really well. I'm quite, I'm looking forward to Soufal, if I'm honest with you. I think um, he's looking sharp. He obviously had a poor season last season, had to have surgery. And this season's sort of like a big one for him, really. And I think he's looking in really good condition. I'm really looking forward to seeing Sufal, um, Sufal next season. Very quiet from Jared Bowen. Didn't really see him at all up front. Like I said, he was out of the game completely. In the second half, um, dropped back a little bit deeper. Then when we made the substitutions, Ashby came on and went left back. Lanzini came on and went into number 10 role. And it pulled Bowen back onto his right wing position. Didn't really see him, if I'm honest with you. It was a very quiet game from Jared, which is nothing to worry about because A, he's looked sharp in another couple of games and it's Jared Bowen. We know he's going to turn up against Man City. It's not the end of the world, is it? Um, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, it finished 1-1. There's quite a few positive performers to take out of there. I think there's, like I said, there was one or two slightly worrying ones as well. And the, the lack of creativity in open play is one of the things that I'm a bit concerned about because... It's all of them. It's not just this player struggling to create stuff. It's Fernals, it's Ben Rama, even Vlasic when he was on. Like I said, I think he looked quite sharp, but I don't really recall him creating a, a chance, for example. Um, you know, the biggest chance for West Ham came from a mix-up by a Luton defenders put Antonio through in goal. We didn't create that. It, it came through an error. Our goal came through a cross from Anna Creswell. Like I said, crossing-wise, we're okay at that, getting the ball wide and getting the ball in the box. We're all right doing that. It's when the team sits deep, packs the box a little bit and says, what are you going to do? It's sort of like, well, don't know, really. We're just going to knock it sideways, if you don't mind. Um, so one one, one, um, one friendly left for West Ham. Hopefully we'll have a couple of new signs by then. Flynn Dans did come on to the pitch. It was quite late on, maybe 10 minutes ago. Flynn Dans come on, didn't really see him, if I'm honest with you. Um, the game was sort of coming to a bit of a, a slower pace at this point. Positive first half for West Ham, I felt, but not so positive second one. And it was just... A lot of changes for both teams is going to do that as well. Interrupts the flow of the game. Like I said, second half, I felt Luton cranked it up a little bit and there was a few tasty tackles going in, uh, which we didn't do any ourselves. We just, well, there's one or two West Ham players not too happy about it. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's it. I'm going to disappear. Um, fingers crossed for a better performance next Saturday. I think we'll get more of an idea of what David Moyes' intentions are ahead of the Man City game next week as well. But it could be a big week for West Ham. Sounds like we're in... Very advanced negotiations with Gianluca Scamacca. A lot of talk around Philip Kostic as well sounds reasonably, reasonably promising. But that's all. Left back talks quite quiet. The Amadou Onana stuff, we're waiting to hear a response. But fingers crossed that come Monday, Tuesday, we'll have a, a new striker, a new Italian striker. 
at the club as well. But anyway, leave your thoughts on the friendly in the comment section. I'll be back later on to take a look. Look, drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you need to the Hamish chat, and I shall catch you tomorrow.